Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited. The purpose of these videos that I've been doing, the interview series, is to share people's stories, to share hope, help, and to give you stepping stones because at some point you're going to need options once you're ready to start moving and then you move. So today I'm so excited because I get to introduce my friends, my fellow PNES warrior advocate. This is Ray Monica. She is, she's coming into her, her place now as uh, advocating for those with FMD, with conversion disorder, with trauma. She, ha she herself does transformative coaching where it is from the inside out, the transformation. So Ray Monica, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your willingness for your vulnerability and for your transparency. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> me too. Me too. So if you wouldn't mind, would you share a little bit about what happened when PNES hit the scene? Okay. So for me, I was 19 and I was actually studying for my finals. And I noticed that my vision was going blurry when I was studying. And then like my neck was starting to get like really stiff. So I was actually home by myself at that time, but I knew I probably shouldn't be driving. So I called my then boyfriend, but now my husband. Hey. <laughs> so I called him and I was like, I think I need you to take me to the hospital. Something's going wrong. So we got to the hospital. They um, did tests. Um, I actually had a spinal tap done. Um, they thought I had meningitis. And so with that spinal tap, I don't know exactly what happened, but they could have nicked a nerve when they did the spinal tap. So, and I also had a spinal fluid leak. So I got really bad migraines for like mm. two weeks after I even left the hospital. I couldn't even stand up sit up I literally was like watching tv like this the only way I could relieve pressure was laying down or tilting my head so I would be eating dinner eating <laughs> sideways wow. it was really bad I actually took my finals with these really bad migraines and I was just <sighs> like and they were like it's normal from a spinal tap um when the test came back they found that I had an abscess on my tonsils so that's what was causing the symptoms mm -hmm. um and then so they put me on steroids for like three days and then after that <clears throat> I actually missed graduation I got my AA so I wanted to walk but it didn't happen um so after that um they were like it's normal to have these um these migraines and these symptoms and I was just mm -hmm. like okay and they were like well it should go away within two weeks so two weeks Two weeks come and they were not going away. They were actually getting worse. So they were like, well, you probably have a spinal fluid leak. So we're going to do a blood patch. So they basically take your blood and then they put it back into the spinal area where they first, <laughs> where they first did the spinal tap to close up the leak, basically. Um, and actually, instantly on the table, I felt... I felt the pressure release, but you were awake? it was, oh yeah. Dang. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It, now that I think about it, I thought that was, yeah, I was, uh, they give you like numbing stuff, right. but yeah, I was definitely okay. awake and they're like, usually you feel it right on the table. I felt the pressure release, but ever since then, like the migraines and the pressure, mm -hmm. it has never subsided. So after that, um, Maybe a month or so, I started fainting, and then I started getting tremors, like, but everything was right-sided. They did the spinal tap on the right side of my spine, so I was just like, I think something's going on from the spinal tap. Like, I mm. think maybe something's going on with that. Um, they did nerve conduction studies. They did, uh, oh my goodness. What, which one is the one? Is it EEG for the seizure the study? Yeah. yeah, the brain. So they did all these studies on me and they were like, well, um, the tremors, the seizures, 
Um, it's actually normal. It can come from something, a traumatic event. And then that's when they started telling me. Um, I went to, I actually went to like almost every hospital here in Jacksonville. Oh my <laughs> because when they were happening, we were like, okay, they're saying that this is going on in my head but they didn't really explain exactly what it was. They were just like, mm -hmm. it's in your head. It's in your head. It's in your head. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? So the final stop was Mayo Clinic. And mm -hmm. um, th that's where I got the diagnosis of conversion disorder. And they started, you know, kind of sharing what it, what it was and it could come from a traumatic event or stress. <clears throat> And um, I remember, like, sitting in the doctor, like, in the ER, and um, they made, like, my boyfriend at the time, uh, now husband, they made him leave, they made my mom leave, they made my dad leave. And I was just like, why are y'all making them leave? And um, I'm not sure who it was, but somebody came in to ask me some really personal questions. Mm -hmm. And they were like, okay, um, are you in an abusive relationship? Um, are your parents abusive? And I'm just like, no, like, where are you getting all of this? Um, and then they were like, in the past, have you been hurt? And I'm like, no, like, this literally just started. I was testing. And a little background with me is I've always been really healthy. I did gymnastics for 15 years, so always active, always competitive, always moving. So this was a really big shift for me to be mm -hmm. not able to move. I actually went through paralysis. So the whole right side was, I couldn't move it. So I had to relearn how to walk. I had to relearn how to talk. Like, wow. the, <laughs> it was like my whole body was just like, going haywire <laughs> yeah pretty much um <clears throat> mm. and so um they were asking these pretty deep questions and I was just like no nothing like that has ever happened um so maybe it's something else um mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest it took me honestly probably last year is when I first accepted the diagnosis of what it could be um, I was so busy trying to prove the doctors wrong. Like, oh. it's not in my head. It's not in my head. Like, this is real. Um, but I think it came from the miscommunication of what the actual diagnosis is. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like if they would have explained it more of psychological, like, this is how your brain processes, mm -hmm. and now it's causing physical symptoms. I think if they right. broke it down. Yes. I wouldn't have been so defensive and I didn't want anything to do with doctors, mm. nurses. I didn't trust. Wow. I got mistreated a lot because of the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, right, and I, I, I was say, <laughs> yeah, I was very defensive and I was just like, you're coming for me. Like you don't want to listen. you just want to say, I need to take a vacation. That's what they literally told me. They told mm -hmm. me to take a vacation. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was very resistant to what the doctors were telling me to do to, I guess, um, get better <laughs> because I was like, this is the wrong diagnosis. <laughs> so for years, I was trying to prove them wrong. So I was missing my opportunity to actually heal. Um, and then, um, like I was saying, last year is when I was like, okay, if they say that this can come from stress or trauma, let me actually try it. Let me go back to therapy. Let me get a coach. Let me really try to work through my past, mm -hmm. my hurts, my traumas. Mm -hmm. And once I released, um, different things started coming up, like to my memory and mm -hmm. things that I didn't remember happened. And I was just yes. like, oh, maybe something did happen that I don't remember. Um, so it was the release. It mm. was coming from defense and releasing and actually surrender. I was <laughs> yes, surrendering. Yeah, and it was like 
it was like accepting but accepting with the will to fight with the will to get better Mm -hmm. so I was like okay I have this it's clearly showing because now you know different traumas are coming up so let's focus on what I need to do to get my mind and my heart clear so Mm -hmm. I can move forward so when you it that is so pertinent what you said about how you went on the defensive because of how it was explained to you last night I was watching a show with my sister and there was a a tragedy that had gone on and it happened to be a medical show there was a tragedy that went on with one of the doctors and the president of the hospital happened to be present and share that with her and said to her you can't continue until you deal with this because it will stay there and it will impact everything you do, everything you touch. And just the way he described that, it was so amazing. I was so encouraged and I thought, oh my goodness, if that isn't the shortest, most succinct way to describe why we need to pause, why we get over it is not a thing that does not exist. There is a process. And the other thing that you said that I felt was so profound because I've seen this so many times, there is a very strong defensiveness when it comes to PNES. I Mm -hmm. see people all the time who say, I've never gone through any traumas. I've never gone through Mm -hmm. um, childhood uh, events. So, you know, there are people who, myself included, and you, who've repressed memories and our brain does that Mm -hmm. not because it wants to make a fool of us, but because it is protecting us. It is protecting us so that we can move on. But at some point it's like a boomerang or like a a rubber band. It's going to snap back. Mm -hmm. One of my earliest descriptions of PNES was similar to that of an earthquake underneath it's because of my science background, oh. <laughs> but underneath the, the earth, we have different plates. And as they're moving in California, there's one, um, the San Andreas fault. And as it moves mm-hmm. it, at some point it's going side by side at some point it boomerangs and it produces an earthquake. And I said, that's exactly yeah. what that's happens in us. But the problem is, <clears throat> We have, my personal feeling is that we as a culture have stopped listening to our own hearts. Mm. We have so many influencers. Our eyes are fixed outward and not inward that we stop hearing ourselves and our body's going to advocate and has advocated for us that you can't keep going in a direction that you were not meant to go in. You need to heal. This whole get over it, Thing is not a thing yeah not it's get it's through it work. not get over right. it exactly yes. heal get, get better and yes yeah. and because only when we heal and we heal the right way we get stronger from it right and we have something that we're not going to repeat a pattern yes definitely I agree completely with that I wish I would have <laughs> learned it a couple of years ago, you know, I'm seven years into this, but I'm glad I finally learned it, you know, seven number of completion. I'm ready. <laughs> Here you go. Exactly. Moving on. Eight is the number of new beginnings, right? Let me tell you next year, <laughs> you new will beginnings. see a lot of me, a lot of new me because I'm yeah. like, God, you, you brought me through this for a reason. Like, and I just feel very strongly, like I have a message and I just want people to see that they need to heal from the inside out. Um, you know, it's it's actually like everybody is like, you know, keep your emotions in, keep how you're feeling in, and that's the problem. You, we keep everything in so long it gets bottled up, and then it, there's an explosion mm-hmm. in different ways. So I just really want to show people like not to just really focus on your outside um, Mm -hmm. because I am a personal trainer. So like not to just focus on your outside, but to really transform from the inside out, like let's get your mind renewed. Let's get your mind free. Let's get your heart clear so that you can receive a full transformation and maintain it. 
Yes, exactly. Maintaining it is so important. In my own story, there were things that I overcame, but I couldn't maintain. I couldn't because it was, I didn't actually heal or learn. So I kept going in the same pattern. I could pick and saying like, why why does this keep, why do I keep attracting this kind of guy? Why do I keep doing this and work? Why do I keep feeling this way? And it was because there was no transformation. I couldn't Mm -hmm. maintain. I could just fake it till I make it. And that's great right. for the start. But guess what? That that will not sustain. <laughs> it will not get you through. <laughs> no. And I so became she, a master of faking. Like my face. Uh, um, yeah. You know, I, I'm always smiling. So yeah. I'll <laughs> cheese. But on the inside, I was <laughs> dying. I was dying on the inside. Yes. But my outside was great. Mm. And it was, it was because I went through it so young. Like I, I was diagnosed at 19, which is kind of very pivotal you know getting out of high school you're in college so it was just like um I didn't really understand what was going on I was like wait a minute like I'm too young to be going through this like I had a walker um like I couldn't walk I was just like what is going on so I was just like I was kind of in like disbelief like and I'm gonna be honest I went through a period of not wanting to talk to God, not wanting to deal with God. I felt like I was a good person and like, God, why would you have this happen to me? So I definitely went through a dark place of depression and just not, not like really wanting to be in fellowship with God again. Mm-hmm. Cause I felt right, that betrayed. Morning. Yes. We go yeah. through this morning because we've <clears throat> lost something. Yeah, we've lost many yeah. things. We've lost our freedom. We've lost our sense of self. We, I mean, we've mm-hmm. lost so much. We've lost our expectations. And these yeah. are things that, oh my goodness, even just one of them can send us in a, to a tailspin. So feeling that, that questioning, all that, that's good and healthy and normal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, share with me a little bit about the transformation. So you, obviously you're on your journey of healing. So tell oh, me what yeah. that looks like. So I'm excited about this. Um, So I would say my journey officially started last year when I got pregnant with my son. Um, I started having like multiple seizures again, like they started happening at work. So I had to stop working again. Um, So I was like, really at home the whole time. And I was just like, instead of me doing what I did last time, Mm -hmm. and you know, getting depressed and going through mourning because I'm feeling like my life is getting ripped away. I said, mm-hmm. I'm going to submit this time to God. And, and I was like, I just want to know you, God, show me you. Um, I want to learn you for me, not for what my mom said, not for what my dad said, not for what the pastor said, you know, like I want to know your word for myself and I want to know you for me. Um, so that was the beginning of my transformation journey like really releasing everything to God to just a put statement, it back into place a declaration yeah yeah I was just like I've tried everything because at this point you know I have like mm. I did the vacations I did um like a pain management um mm-hmm. program mm-hmm. which was good it helped me cope with the symptoms but it didn't help me get to the root of the symptoms um and then, um, like I said earlier, I, I started therapy and actually going in with the expectation of healing this time instead of being, I had a block. I'm going to be honest. I had a block the first time because I felt like I wasn't supposed to be there. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not like, this is what was going in my head. I'm not crazy. I don't need help um in the mental mm-hmm. area but that was just my understanding of what I thought mental health was and right. it's not everybody has mental health like yes. everybody has it you need to focus on it it's not a bad thing it's actually a good thing to start to talk to people to release so I took therapy serious this time so that was a big that was a big step for me like to be um transparent and open with somebody Mm -hmm. and actually express how I felt um that was kind of hard but it was the beginning of the transformation um 
And so that was the start. Um, and fitness was very strong in my transformation. Um, like I said, I had a, a very strong background in moving and flipping and doing everything. <laughs> so, but what I realized is I hid behind the way I looked. I hid behind my accomplishments. Mm-hmm. I hid behind my titles. So what happened when everything got stripped away with this diagnosis and these symptoms, I was lost. Wow. Like I had all my hope, all my confidence, Your identity all my was in acceptance. There. Yes, my wow. identity was in the way I looked, um, yeah. the way I worked out, the, all of the, yeah, all the materialistic stuff. That's where it was. It, my faith wasn't grounded in in Jesus. It wasn't. Mm-hmm it wasn't a permanent foundation. Mm. So going through my transformation journey is now it's starting to come up. Like I'm literally just getting this now, like two weeks ago. Um, (laughs) Two weeks ago. So serious. Just now the revelation of like, you had your confidence in something that was not able to hold it. (laughs) Mm. And when it got stripped away, it, it allowed it to surface. Isn't that amazing? I mean, Mm -hmm. it's so great because I I know we both have relationships with God. It's not a rule keeping God. It is a relational God. And you're right. It's if in the past I had, I also put my, um, my identity in my titles. So my identity of wife, mother, teacher, um, instructor, so all these things, and yes, in one foul swoop, they were all gone. gone. <laughs> and it's like, who am I? Right, exactly. If, if I'm not these things, then I do I even exist? <laughs> I mean, just those very existential questions, which are really good right. to get down to. But yes, that, that right. identity piece was huge. Who am I? Mm-hmm. If you take every title, if you take everything away, who am I? Mm-hmm. What stands? So I, I'm so glad that you came back to that point. And I really like what yeah. you said about everybody has mental health. So everybody has physical health. Everyone has, mm-hmm. uh, we have these things going on. And yes, it is. We have annual checkups to check our physical health. But you are so right about everyone has mental health. We have psychological yes. health. And we have, yes. this is a very important part of our body. It's a very and we have to term. keep it healthy. So yeah. I love how you said that because it's it's something that we, it's not talked about. It's just not. It's not no. talked about that we need to have, sorry, I have cats that are pushing my computer. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, problem. <laughs> uh, they want to be in an interview too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we have these components of our life that we never shine the light on to see what it is. We never take the temperature, so to speak, to see how am I doing psychologically? How am I doing emotionally? How is my heart? Not the physical heart, but how is the center Mm. of my core? Um, And I think it's so, it's pertinent. It it comes onto the stage, Mm. onto the scene and says, hi, I'm here. You you don't really know me very well, but I'm your heart. I'm your core. Let's yes. get to know each other because there's some yes. things that I need to communicate to you because I yes. love you. And that's what I, yes. I communicate to people about the fact that this was not an act of retaliation or rebellion of my body. I saw this as, I love you. I want you to be preserved. Wow. Let's not keep going on this path. Wow. Now that mind shift, that perception change, yes. that will change your your whole process of thinking of and accepting, allowing you to accept where you are and mm-hmm. to start to listen to what your body is trying to say. Because our bodies speak and that's with um, yes. th- this disorder, it, that's all it is. It's just saying, hey, like, uh, you need to focus on this. Um, you're feeling this way, but address it. Don't just hide it. Don't just put it under the rug. See why you're feeling like this. So um, really a part of my journey was me starting to question 
the way I was feeling. So when I would have my triggers or have my episodes or my speech would start to go in and out, I would sit back, take a deep breath, and really just say, okay, what just happened? Did it cause me to feel upset? Did it cause me to feel stressed? And then I was like, okay, so why did you feel stressed? And I literally started to break down everything. I, I wasn't ashamed of the feeling. And I was just trying to get to where did the root come from? And that is the key, I believe, to really healing that inner healing, healing from that hurt, healing from the trauma, is to really go in deeply. Um, to, but having that focus of maybe something is wrong, accepting like, okay, something is wrong is a key and getting out of that defensive state that I'm okay. I don't need this. <laughs> like, no, right. like really learn your thoughts, learn yes. your feelings, yes. your emotions. Um, God gave them to us for a reason. <laughs> and so, the one thing that is so profound is I've heard time and time again, now this is true and it can be a good stabilizer when we're starting to spiral, but people will wash away everything in their life, the hard day that they're having by saying, people have it worse than me, right? And so that's yep. great as far as a stabilizer, but if you just ignore your problems because the truth mm. is that, yes, everybody, you take anybody and there is somebody who has it worse. Oh, yeah. But that Definitely. cannot be something to sweep it under the rug. Like, well, you know, I, I just true. have to get stronger. It's No, what is your body trying to tell you? What is it that your yeah. heart wants you to know? What truth is trying to emerge? Because that's what mm. this is. It's a shaking, a rattling. When earthquakes happen, it's an energy that's released. Yes. Yes, I am in agreement. <laughs> that, is, that's just, that is what I'm learning now. And now that I'm accepting it, I'm seeing, I'm seeing transformation. Like I'm not seizure free yet, but I will be. I declare that I will be seizure free. Yes. Um, but I'm learning how to, like when my symptoms come on, I'm actually, since I'm going into that process of seeing like, why am I feeling this? Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually able to stop a full-blown seizure from happening now. So I see the light at the end of the tunnel now. Like, yeah. there was in darkness for a long time, but I'm seeing the light. I'm seeing progress. And mm -hmm. I used to, in the past, like, if I would go months or something um, without having an episode, without having a seizure, um, mm -hmm. and then I would have it, it would mentally, it would break me every mm. time because I'm like oh I went five months oh I'm an expectation months. right expectation is huge I mean we have to mm -hmm. have right expectation and the yep. fact is our bodies are going to if you want to set up a right expectation a right expectation is that your body is going to continue to protect you and if you mm -hmm. listen to the signs it will tell you what's going on before you have that big kabam but yes. it's about paying attention to the little things, that little the voice little inside that says, this person, they don't really care about you or they're not protecting yeah. you. You need to distance yes. yourself from them. Or this relationship is destructive because it's not building you up. It's really tearing you down. Or that mm. person, that person's controlling <laughs> and they don't want you to get better. So there are so many things that if you tune yourself and attune yourself to listening what is your heart saying what's going on mm -hmm. inside that it, it'll make all the difference and your body's not going to have that need to get your attention so dramatically because yes. you're listening yep. <laughs> i mean people say you know it's been five and a half years since I've had a seizure it's coming up um yes yeah. it's, so it's five and a half years since I've had a seizure but don't get me wrong. If I, if I go back to my old ways, it's, you know, it's, oh, it, yeah. I believe it's that definitely. it would happen just the same way, but it's mm -hmm. a lifestyle change. It's a shift. There it's transformation that is, that I can maintain. And it's all about recognizing what's there that doesn't belong, removing it and replacing it with something good. 
instead of in the mm. past, I'll share this little tidbit. I used to recognize something that was not good. I would run from it. So I didn't take it out of my life. I ran from it. Yes. <laughs> and I would end up in a new situation. Guess what? This thing happened again. The same situation. <laughs> same thing <laughs> happened. It just repeat. Yes. It, I mean, it was just like, like looking you at my life. that repeatability. <laughs> oh my goodness. Somewhere. It there was no replacement. Yes. You yes. don't find a repeatability until you Everything. deal with what is the root. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's it. It's about getting the root out. It's going to the root. And yes, you can do this. Mm. Oh, I want to say, um, I don't believe that you can do this alone without support. You need support. Do you need I medical tried. help? Or work. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I, you had both. You had medical support and you had uh, counselors and coaching. So you have those components. Team. Right, exactly. I built a team exactly. to heal. <laughs> yes, because yeah. you didn't have, I mean, the people that you had in your life, they had some support for you, but you needed yeah. people with bigger skills. So you needed to swim mm -hmm. with bigger fish and learn from them. So that's yeah. something in my situation too. I didn't have that medical support, but I had people in my life who knew how to overcome. Yeah. So I had people with overcomer mentalities in my life. Mm. And then I, they got me to a certain point, you know, they helped me or they traveled with me to a certain point. And then I realized if I want to get farther. I need new people. And that was a whole trust thing. Yeah. And you said that it's hard to trust. So, Ooh. but what are you willing to give up? <laughs> right. So, it's like, I've tried it this way so many times and it didn't work. So yeah. what am I going to change? And yeah. the change was me being open and honest mm. and transparent with Oof. myself so yes. I could and heal. Yes. A big thing for me was uh, about control, you know, it, mm. because it was completely fear-based. I needed, I needed to control my environment. I needed to feel like I was in control. And you okay. know what? I mean, we're not meant to have to do that. <laughs> you know, we're just right. not meant to to have that weight we on us. to but right and if you look about what's behind it it was all about fear fear of outcomes right so building yep. in things like learning about boundaries and about my self-worth and learning about people's behaviors and what it says about them and just looking at people as people we're all wounded people. we are all wounded we all have things in our lives that we're still dealing with there's no one who's perfect here there are though people who have new skills that we don't have that would benefit us so for me i had to surrender my control and give it to god because i really believe that he's got a good plan for all of us and that mm -hmm. yeah. he's a lot more qualified <laughs> for lot, all of you know, this a little Just bit. A little bit. <laughs> Yes, so definitely. if he's got a, he's got more power, more, you know, qualifications, and he's got a good plan, why not surrender? But even now, exactly. in, in five and a half years, seizure free, I still have to surrender things oh, time after time, because like thing. you said, you, it brings things up. There's always more churning in, in our hearts, you know, and it's not an exhausting process. I mean, sometimes it takes some energy, but mm -hmm. oh my goodness. It's like making a gourmet meal. You put all this work oh, and effort yeah. and yeah, you're That's tired and you are doing all, and you look at this table and it's set and it's beautiful and all those smells it and you just get refreshed. It. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All worth it. All worth it. Yeah, so definitely. thank you so much for sharing. I'm so excited that you're, oh, just for your transparency. So let me ask, there are two questions that I want to ask you. Okay. And just side note, you can take your time in answering them. What Thank you. <laughs> is the most important thing that you want people to hear from you right now? And what is your particular hope to share? Hmm, the most important thing. Like if, no, if people hear nothing but this one thing, what do you want them to hear? get out of your own way sometimes we sometimes we are the barrier to us breaking free 
from the life that we want. Um, and it comes from trauma. It comes from our life experiences. Um, and we think that's just the way we are. That's the way we think. That's the way we act. But sometimes that was just something we learned to cope with, to get through that part of our life. So getting out of your own way to me is confronting that past, letting those memories, letting those things come up and you going head, head first and putting your, being, being in that place again where you felt that pain. Mm. It's hard to do. Yes. Um, but getting back into that place where you felt that pain and then letting God into that place to heal you. Mm. So that is my version of getting out of your own way and doing that in a whole aspect. So, and then what I mean by that is we are body, soul, and spirit. So what I believe is we to get to like a sustained fitness it goes back to that personal trainer sorry so <laughs> to get to that sustained fitness we have to be mentally fit we have to be um emotionally fit um, mm -hmm. spiritually fit yeah. socially fit like we have to be fit as a whole so in order to do that it's going to take some deep work and you're going to have to get out of your own way with those excuses um with saying no mm -hmm. <laughs> And saying yes, you're gonna have to learn how and when to say yes, and how and when to say no. <laughs> That's something I'm still learning, but I believe that it is a big, big part. So mm -hmm. I believe that would be my last final <laughs> words for that. Great. Um, what was the second question? What is your hope? Oh, your personal brand of hope. <clears throat> My hope is for people to really be free, free from the inside out, transformed from the inside out, and for them to know that they can be free, like they mm -hmm. don't have to keep living the way they're li living, they don't have to keep going through the same circumstances over and over. Um, but it, it takes it takes a, a dying to yourself, <laughs> a dying what to does yourself that will. What does so what that means is when something comes up and your reaction is to run, like you were saying, to stand and to go forward. And when that happens, we're dying to our old ways. We're leaving those old ways in the past. So what I mean by that is leaving the old ways, the old ways of thinking, the old ways of acting in the past, because you've been doing that your whole life and that's where we are now. So let's try to change something to see what happens after that. Mm -hmm.